Hello, everyone. Thank you ever so much for your attention today. And I'm really delighted to be able to represent the University of Central Lancashire and tell you all about our medical program, but also give you an insight into our university and our community. One of the key questions we do get asked in these sessions is, are they recorded? And the short answer is yes, they are recorded. They will be available after the session and eventually uploaded to the School Finder YouTube page. So you will be able to watch this back. If there are any things that you want to go over to review, you can also ask me questions and we'll have a look at those at the end of the session. No question is a silly question. It's, it's one of those. We'll be more than happy to answer any queries that you may have. So the University of Central Lancashire. We are a multi-campus location. We're based in the United Kingdom. I actually feel that we are the best geographically located university in the entire country. The reason I say that is because we're pretty much right in the middle of the UK. We are exactly two and a half hours, give or take, to Edinburgh in Scotland by train. And we're around two hours, 10 minutes to two and a half hours by train to London. So they're the two most visited cities, destinations, locations in the United Kingdom. Obviously, the, the two major capitals of, of England and Scotland, places where you'll have loads of cultural opportunities to explore. We're also 45 minutes from Manchester, 50 minutes from Liverpool by train. You can get to Birmingham, you can get to Yorkshire, to Leeds, up to Newcastle, down to the southwest, places like Bristol and further onwards to Cornwall. All over the country, we are so well connected. But one of the best things about the University of Central Lancashire is that we are the most affordable university in the whole United Kingdom, according to the Times newspaper. That's this year in 2023. That takes in consideration a lot of different metrics, such as our living costs, tuition fees, scholarships, but also going out and about your gym membership, what it's like to socialize, dine out, eat out, drink out, go shopping, all of these factors together combine to make the University of Central Lancashire the most affordable university in the UK. Now, as a multi-campus location in the northwest of England, it's worthwhile knowing, particularly as this is a medicine-focused presentation, that our medical students will take advantage of our three campuses in the UK, that being our main campus in the city of Preston, our Burnley campus, which is Burnley, a small sort of post-industrial town, very working town where you had a lot of the old mills in the Industrial Revolution. In fact, Victoria Mill is a converted mill that is part of our campus, so a very historic and heritage building that we teach you in there. And then West Lakes is up in Cumbria, the neighbouring county to Lancashire in the northwest, beautiful part of England on the borders of the Lake District. That's our largest national park. And it's also home to the Centre of Rural and Disaster Medicine. What these three campuses offer our medical students as you transition around them over your five year medical program is exposure to different medical practices. You, for example, at Westlakes get the opportunity for a bit more one on one time with your supervisors because the pace of life up in Cumbria on that West Coast is a little bit quieter to say Preston, which is the county seat, the county city of Lancashire, although Preston is not a large city by any means. We do have an overseas campus in Cyprus that does not yet have a medical school, but you never know in the future, things can always happen. But it's worth knowing that Cyprus campus is there as part of our global network. We are a global student and staff community of around 42,000 with around 100 plus nationalities. So a very diverse university. Now we do get a lot of interest from Canadian students in part because one of the benefits of studying medicine in the UK is that you can study it straight from high school, unlike Canada and the US where you need to go to graduate school first and then go on to do your medicine once you have achieved your bachelor degree. So if you're a high school student, let's say for example, you're in Toronto, you're studying on the OSSD, depending on your entry requirements, what you achieve in your final grade 12, you could come straight to the University of Central Lancashire into our first year of a five year medical program. That means you're becoming a qualified doctor in five years. That will be in many cases, three or four years ahead of your counterparts that will be studying in North America. And 
as Achint, one of our Canadian graduates here says, Preston is a location, very compact. Our campus is right at the heart of the city and our medical school, which was opened in 2015 is a very modern building right at the heart of our campus with all the latest equipment and technology. And that gives you great access to our city. As he mentions there as well, low cost of living already said, we are the most affordable university in the UK. We have guaranteed accommodation for our first time, full time international students. So you do not have to worry about looking around for accommodation. Our accommodation starts from 85 pounds per week, which also includes all of your bills of gas, water, electric and internet, plus free gym membership. We like to think that we are a family community at UCLan. We have also been ranked in the top three UK universities for our mental health and well-being support. Student support is a vital component of the success of our university. In fact, 100% of our medicine graduates have gone on to graduate placement. 90% of all our international students have gone on to work or further study when they leave us. So we have very high graduate success rates and our student support system, which compose, comprises of mental health support, physical well-being support, spiritual support, academic support, allows our students to go on to great success. Now, our medical school is truly global. In fact, we have students from every continent, although we don't have penguins from Antarctica, uh, but all the main continents, uh, we have students represented from there. When it comes to our entire medical school population, we currently have around 950 students across all of our years on the medicine program. And out of that 950, just under 100, I believe it's 96, are from Canada. So there is a healthy Canadian community within our medicine cohort. And we probably, I would say, see each year up to 200 to 250 medical school applications from Canadian students. So we do have a lot of interest. We actually also, and we'll talk about interviews later on in the presentation, we do host interviews in Canada. So we do these in Toronto and Vancouver in the springtime. And so we do make it as accessible as possible for you to get exposed to our medical program, to be interviewed by our staff in your country. And then hopefully you'll consider coming to study with us. So why would you choose our medical school out of all the others that are available to you, not just in the UK, but across the world and obviously particularly back home in Canada? Well, we are accredited by the General Medical Council. When our students graduate from us, they become junior doctors and can gain access to the National Health Services Foundation Pathway Programme. That would be equivalent to what you would call a residency in Canada. That is a two-year foundation programme that leads to your full qualification as a doctor and can lead on to specialisation. However, we are listed in the World Directory of Medical Schools, which does allow you to transition back to Canada to practice medicine at home. It also allows you to undertake the US MLE if you wanted to head to the United States and practice medicine there. We are one of the most unique medical school universities in the UK in that we give you early patient contact. In fact, you are going to be in placement within a clinical setting from your very first year. You have 14 days of clinical placement in year one and in year two, followed by full clinical placement from year three onwards to finishing in year five. These placements take place in our partner institutions, partner hospitals, NHS foundation trusts across the county, in local clinics and doctor's surgeries and hospices. So there is a range of different patient contacts that you will be exposed to. Now we are a historical university. We have been around since 1828. Our medical school has been in existence since 2015. So we have built state-of-the-art facilities. We use virtual dissection tables. We have the latest NHS equipment replicating ward situations, and we have virtual reality simulation suites. So you are going to be taught in the latest technical specifications, replicating the type of environment you will go into on your clinical placement and in your professional career. 
We are the top medical school in the northwest of England. As I already mentioned, 100% of our graduating cohorts have gone on to placements when they have left us. And our curriculum composes of a spiral curriculum, which allows you to build on your foundation building blocks on each year and add in additional elements of teaching as you, in, 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 as you continue. Mentioned already, we've been training medics since 2015. We have had Canadians graduating from our program and returning back to Canada. We are also unique in that we have up to 250 places for international students. As I already mentioned, we are a very international medical school. You will find that many UK medical schools will only accept maybe single figure numbers of international students. If more, they'll only be in the teens up to sort of 20. We allow up to 200 to 250. We also do not require you to take an entrance exam such as the UCAT, the BMAT or the GAMSAT. We like to take a holistic approach to our recruitment process and as we will talk about here, things like your personal statement and work experience, then your interview form a big part of your admission to UCLan's medical school. So with our state of the art facilities, as you can see here, it's high spec medical skills, labs, NHS standard equipment throughout. So you are not going to be trained on equipment that you would not be using in a professional setting. We at the University of Central Lancashire have always been a vocational university across all of our academic schools. We inbuild employability and career skills. And so a part of that is ensuring that you are being taught not only by the best within their field, doctors, surgeons, clinicians, and scientists that are practicing as well as teaching you, but having the equipment available at your fingertips so that when you go into the world of work, there are no surprises for you. So our faculty are comprised of experienced teaching staff and as already mentioned, practicing clinicians and scientists and researchers. There is a lot of active research that goes on amongst our leading faculty members and people like our Dean, Alison Carr, they have had an international career. And so supporting international students forms an important part of our school. We have a lot of recently qualified doctors that act as teaching fellows so you can gain amazing insight into the career profession that you're going into. And again, I think what's a great selling point of our university is that we allow you to apply to our medical program outside of the university college and mission systems deadline windows. So a lot of those for medical programs passed in October. With us at the University of Central Lancashire, we stay open throughout the cycle. So our cohort joins us each September and we have our application window open until the spring or early summer. For this year, if you're interested in joining us in September 2024, our application deadline is July 15th. So you do still have a long time to compile your application documents, to understand a little bit more about our entry requirements, write your personal statement, and then consider applying to us. We do our interviews throughout the academic year, so we are doing them currently here in the UK, and we will start going on the road to different locations globally from January through to the late springtime. So our spiral curriculum, as mentioned, is unique, allowing you to build on these three core skill areas with professionalism running throughout the program, as already mentioned, going on your work placements from year one brings that professionalism to it and you build on these modules each individual year. What we also do is have you complete your final exams in year four, which allows you in the fifth year of the medical program to transition onto your clinical phase. It allows you to work with our transition leader within the school on where you want to go. Do you want to go back to Canada? Are you wanting to stay in the UK and do your placement in the UK on the NHS's foundation program? Do you want to continue in education? Do you want to go on to postgraduate study and research? There are so many options. And so year five gives you that time to transition into that phase. So when it comes to our requirements, these are our high school requirements coming out of Canada, and these are provincial based. So depending on what province and state you come from, 
determines the entry requirements. I'll leave these up on the screen for a moment, but as mentioned, these presentations are recorded, will be available after the session and online later on. But it gives you a breakdown and an idea. Now, one of the key components of applying to medical school in the UK is having chemistry as one of your grade 12 subjects. That is a, a major requirement. If you do not have chemistry, and then one other science, which could be biology, could be physics, psychology, and maths come into that category, then you won't be considered. We have to have chemistry as a minimum. Now, if you want to come to us as a graduate, if you've already done your bachelor degree and you're now thinking, I want to go on to do my medicine program, then we will take you on a four-year bachelor degree if you've done a science specialism with the GPA of 2.8, or 70% overall, or if you haven't done a science specific degree, we would take you similar GPA, but you would have to have chemistry lab classes, six credits of those, six credits of another science class with a lab. Now that could be a continuation of chemistry or a completely separate science, and then six credits of any other science class outside of that. So again, as you can see, prerequisite is chemistry, then another science. So it's, it's something to be aware of when you're looking at what you've studied and done before you make your application. Without chemistry, unfortunately, you won't be considered. So making an application to us, in the first instance, you can apply within the UCAS windows, but as already mentioned, one of our unique selling points is that you can apply outside of the UCAS window directly via our online portal. This is where you will upload all of your documents, we require your either predicted grades or your completed grades from high school or college. We require a personal statement reference, which needs to be an academic or professional reference, has to be signed by the referee and needs to be on official letterhead paper. If your school or college does not allow you to receive references, you can have them send them directly to our admissions team. This way, our admissions team can then upload them to your profile and it can be reviewed by our clinical admissions team. Once all of your documents have been submitted, our admissions team will review. And if your application meets our requirements, they will invite you to interview. You'll receive a link to book your interview and our interviews take place in person. We get asked why we do them in person and not like other medical schools that do them online. One of the main reasons for this is our holistic approach to admissions. Yes, your academic experience on paper, your CV, your resume, what experience you've had is important, but getting to know you, getting to ask you questions in an interview setting allows our staff to understand you better as a person, understand your motivations for wanting to study medicine and become a doctor. And this is why we choose to do our interviews in person. As already mentioned, we have multiple locations and included in these locations is Canada. So if you put your application in now and you're successful at being invited to interview, you could book an interview in Toronto or Vancouver in the spring of 2024. If you don't put your application in now, there would still be dates up until the spring and summer in other locations around the world. Once you've had your interview, you will then be provided an offer to study with us. This may come with conditions if you're still waiting to complete study, if you need to get certain exam requirements or if you're missing certain components. And as long as you meet these, you can then look forward to enrolling with us. Now, when it comes to your personal statement, you may have heard this referred to as a college essay or a statement of purpose. This is your opportunity to sell yourself to our clinical admissions team who review this document and pass it on to our academic staff who will conduct the interview. What we're going to be looking for is what you understand about being a doctor. How much have you thought about the career choice you're looking into, the pressures that come with this important community role the stresses that it can put on you, what drives you to become a doctor? What are you passionate about? How do you keep up to date with 
the changes of the role of a doctor with the latest research, what's happening within the industry. These are all things that you can sell about yourself in the personal statement, how you are engaging with this role ahead of coming into study. We're also going to be looking for teamwork and communication skills. Now, this doesn't necessarily have to be that you've done work experience in a clinical setting. This can be that you are a part of a school-based club or team, that you're a prefect, head student, that you're on a committee, that you take part in collegiate sport, that you are in a community group, Model UN. These type of exercises will demonstrate and highlight to our review board that you have communication skills, that you understand the values of working in a team, supporting colleagues and so on. Have you got any awards? Again, these can be academic and non-academic. Are they sporting? Are they based around a club or society? Are they community based? And tell us a bit more about your extracurricular activities. What are you interested in? What are your hobbies? What do you like doing in your spare time? These all form a key part of the personal statement. We'll also be looking for attention to detail in terms of spelling, grammar, and your construction, your, your structure, let's say, of your personal statement. So make sure you do have someone proofread it, do a spell check if you need to on your word processing platform. Make sure that you go through it thoroughly before submitting it and that you're happy with this document. And when it comes to work experience, when you're highlighting this within your personal statement or on a resume, work experience, as I said, does not have to be about shadowing a doctor, working in a hospital, doing something in a clinical setting. It can be as simple as working in a community or care home environment. It can be doing volunteer work at school, being a part of a society or club leading one of these activities. You could be observing care in your home of a family member or a friend. These are other ways, not just being a doctor's shadow, being in that clinical setting that can give you great access to experience that our team are going to want to look for. We don't just want you to list, though, this work experience. We want you to analyze it, reflect upon it, tell us what it has taught you, tell us how it has shaped your ambition to become a doctor, how you view the role, and how you feel you can contribute on this career choice. This will then bring us to the interview. So we do what's called a multiple mini interview. It's comprised of between six to eight stations, and these will be manned by a member of our academic staff, people that you would be taught by on our medicine program. Each station is seven minutes in length with a two minute prep time and a five minute interview. Now the prep time is you reading the scenario or watching the scenario as we do have some audio visual scenarios. We provide you with paper, a pen and a clipboard so that you can make notes and, and don't worry, the notes are not assessed. We just give them to you so that you can jot down your thoughts your process of coming to the conclusions you need to around the scenario. Once the two minutes is up, you'll have five minutes in conversation with the panel member. And what will happen here is they will ask you a series of questions around the scenario. And these are all going to be based around ethics and values of becoming a doctor, motivations, transferable skills. There may be a session on your personal statement as well, kind of delving into more about you as an individual and, and what drives you to wanting to pursue this career. And when they've asked the questions that they need to, they will then open it up to you to make any more comments or ask questions as needed. We also, as part of the interview, do a short math test and a short English composition test as well. Again, manned by a member of our academic team. Now, beyond your five year medical program, there are many routes and options for you. You will successfully complete the GMC medical license exam, allowing you to then go on through the NHS Foundation training with UCLAN's support. We support students in their transition to that foundation pathway or onto further postgraduate training options. 
You can, as already mentioned, look to register to go back to Canada or overseas in other countries subject to licensing, and our transition team will support you with this. This just gives you a, a brief overview of the progression opportunities. So our medical school program is five years in length. You can then look to do your foundation program in the UK on the National Health Services pathway, which takes two years to complete, or you can do your foundation training overseas. Once you've completed the National Health Services Foundation program, you can then go into specialty training in the UK. Depending on the specialism, we've given two examples here, one of general practitioner that takes three years and one for pediatrics, which takes eight years, you can then gain additional qualification. What we would always say is that the life of a doctor is one that is always learning, always gaining specialty training continuously throughout your career. Or you can do your UK foundation program, your two year training, and then go to practice abroad doing home country training programs, the USMLE, and other such training courses. Our transition support within the school will help you with these options. You will not be left to decide on your own. You will have all the support you need to help you in this very important decision for your lifelong career goals. What I would encourage you to do is check out our social media channels as well. In particular, our YouTube does have quite a good set of videos of our medical facilities, usually does have some uh, interviews with students. On our website as well, you can chat to current international students, and there are several medicine students on that platform. It's really good to get that authentic student voice. I'm not an international student. I didn't study at UPAN, and I definitely did not study medicine. So I'm, whilst a great advocate for the university, I'm not in the position to tell you the specifics of being a student on this program. And so our chat to a student or ask a student facility, as it's known on our website, is a really valuable resource for you. So I am more than happy at this stage to have a look through our questions. So got some questions here about how big is the Canadian population at UCLan. So as I already mentioned, in, in terms of in the medical faculty specifically, we've currently got 96 Canadian students. All being told, we probably have around 150 Canadians on our uh, university campuses across all of our programs. Uh, we do have uh, great access into the Canadian market. We're well known across Canada. And so I do feel that it is a good environment at UCLan for Canadian students. But of course, being an international student allows you access to students that become your friends from all over the world. And as previously mentioned, the medical program particularly is very international. You'll be studying with students from the Middle East, from Africa, from Asia, from Europe, from South America, from Australia. There's a huge range there. And the same can be said about all of our programs, all of our 10 academic schools that we have. Looking down further, how do Canadian students do medical residency in the UK, in Canada or elsewhere? Does the university find placements? So in terms of the residency in the UK, any student, whether you're international or UK, is granted access to apply for the National Health Services two year foundation program. That's what we would call a residency in in Canada or the US, for example. The school will support you with this application. You actually have to have the school support in order to get onto the program. You have to make several decisions on this program. So you will obviously be studying in Lancashire. You'll have your placements whilst you're on our medical program within Lancashire and within Cumbria when you transition to the Westlakes campus. When you look at the NHS's foundation program, you might decide that you want to do your placement in let's say Yorkshire in Leeds or you want to head to the southwest towards Devon, Cornwall, Dorset. You might say you want to go to London. There are many factors to consider in these decisions whether you want to be in a big city or you want to be in a rural environment, whether you want to be in a city like London which is fairly expensive to live or you want to be outside of London in more affordable areas of the UK. 
is it the right place for you? Does it support your needs and desires and what you want? These are all things that you can talk about with the transition lead in the school. When it comes to doing residency back in Canada, our transition leads in the school will help support you in your routing back to Canada and the system. As we're on the World Directory of Medical Schools list, we are recognized for students to return to Canada subject to the very various licensing exams needed to then practice medicine in Canada. You would not need to return to Canada and do a complete medical degree to then practice. You can practice on our degree, you just need the relevant licensing exams. We have had students now successfully graduate from UPAN and transition back to Canada. So we do have the experience within the school to support you with that. You wouldn't need to find your own placement when you're on our program in the UK. We have a great network of placement opportunities across a range of NHS foundation trusts within the region. And so we will support you with these placements. Question here about do clinicians like nurses qualify for the course? So if you've studied a science-based program already, if you've already got a degree, whether that be in nursing, whether that be in kinesiology, sports science, these programs would allow you to come onto our medical program subject to meeting the various entry requirements. If you're coming from Canada and you haven't studied a science specific subject, then we, as we already mentioned, would require you to have chemistry and other science credits. If you've come from other countries, again, we do look at, depending on the entry requirements, at your previous experience, and we do accept graduates onto our medicine program. So there, there are various options and routes there for you. There is still time and opportunity for you to ask me more questions. If I were to summarize about UCLan and our medical program, or just in general studying medicine in the UK, it's a five year medicine program. So quicker route to practice than what you would have back home in Canada or the US if you chose to study there. So you're straight into employment after your five years, earning, working within the field that you're passionate about. We're an international medical program with up to 250 places available for international students every single year. And we can allow you to apply directly all the way up until the summer with no need for an entrance exam. We do a holistic admissions process, which comprises of a review of your documents, personal statement and work experience before inviting you to an interview, which takes place in person and is comprised of a multiple mini interview scenario. We do have a great feature on our website called Ask a Student. Men, many medical students on there that you can pose questions to, to support in your decision making towards applying to the University of Central Lancashire's medicine program. It would be great to see some of you applying to that program off the back of this presentation and this evening's session. You are more than welcome to reach out to myself, check out our booth, my contact details are there. And you will also in our booth be able to find our guide to applying to medical school. So again, you can watch this back, but I have included within our resources of our booth, a very handy guide to applying to our medical program for you to download and take away. Just having a look here to see if there's any additional questions coming in at the moment. Another question just come in, what would be the cost? Oh, great question, yes. So in terms of the medicine program, it's a 50,000 pound per year program. So five year program, 250,000 British pounds. We do not have scholarships for this program. However, we do accept various Canadian loans. So we have a team that are embedded within our finance department at our university that can support you on the loan requirements. If you're receiving private bank loans or loans from province and state government, then we do recognize these and accept these. So you can use that financial aid to support you and pay for your studies at the University of Central Lancashire for uh, the medicine program. 
Now, uh, we do have the option for you to do your foundation year, which allows you to do a year of foundation study. That allows you to then go on to the five-year program. I think most students will be able to come directly from high school. And so therefore, £50,000 per year is the cost of tuition currently. When we're looking at accommodation, £85 per week is our most affordable accommodation, which includes all of your bills. Living costs in general, I think it's subjective depending on each individual's desires in terms of their, their living environment. You'd probably say in Preston, anywhere between six to eight hundred pounds per month, which would be your rent and then your day to day living, such as food and going out. Food is very inexpensive in Preston. We have a lot of opportunities for you to dine out with cuisine from all over the world and also many local supermarkets and affordable shopping opportunities. So you are well supported as an international student. To use the sort of North American analogy, I would say that Preston is very much now a college town. We are a very important component of the city and therefore a lot of services are geared up to support our student community. I'm going to be around for the rest of the evening. If people do want to reach out to me and ask questions, you can also, as I say, access our booth where my contact details can be found and our resources, our international student guide and medical guide are available to you there. I really appreciate your time and your attention this evening with this presentation. Hopefully it's been informative and given you more of an indication of what life on a medical program in the UK could be like for you. And hopefully you consider the University of Central Lancashire as that option for your medical career going forward. Thank you, everybody. Really appreciate your time.